What's going on, guys? Zach and Spence here from iTrends Trading coming at you with a crazy watch list. Really, it's just a crazy week in the market. This week, we've got nuts, nuts. So it's going to be a complete roller coaster. Very, very nuts. Uh, if you're a new trader or um, you're just not very prone to a lot of risk, please be careful this week. It's going to be a lot, a lot of stuff is going on. First off, it's FOMC week. So in general, any regular FOMC week when it's just the FOMC speaking and they're talking about their interest rate changes these days, it's a roller coaster. Um, so we've got that. So it's automatically going to be a roller coaster of a week, very volatile. But to add on to it, not only do we have FOMC week, we also have the biggest earnings week of the uh, well of the quarter I was going to say the year but the quarter this week we've got Apple Alphabet um, Microsoft we got every company that you could think of I mean everybody's there is there Amazon's there as well um, so we got a really really kind of crazy crazy week going on this week um, on top of the earnings the FOMC we've got GDP which could come back negative and if it's negative that would be the second quarter in a row and if you know what that means then awesome if you don't uh that means that we'd be in a technical recession uh which the you know the markets and the news the news the publishers have been talking about a lot so i'm sure that you guys are aware of that so we've got a lot of stuff going on this week and it's again going to be really nuts i would expect a lot of fake breaks i would also expect a lot of volatility i would expect a lot of overnight swings we're going to have a lot a lot of vol volatile trading. It's going to be really crazy. Um, so uh, just a brief explanation of what we got on the calendar. So it's the earnings week. That's a side. You guys can look that up. Um, just use this company called Earnings Whispers. They're the best of the best. Just check it out if you want to know what earnings are what days. Um, the big tech guys, those guys are on Thursday. Just to let you guys know after hours. But as far as the, the, the more news related um, week calendar. We've got nothing on Monday, thank God. It doesn't really mean that it's going to be a good way to, good day to trade, but we've got nothing being reported, um, aside from some minor oil stuff. Um, but Tuesday, we've got CB Consumer Confidence. So that's the, I forget what CB stands for, but that's, that's really, really important, and that will move the market. We also have new home sales and housing price indexes and stuff. Those are a little bit lesser of importance. Um, even though the market has been paying attention to real estate and real estate values and what's going on with the sales and the inventory and this, that, and the next thing, really the CB consumer confidence at 10 a.m. is what um, could move the market uh, kind of uh, a little bit more volatile. But we've got some earnings on Tuesdays as well, which would be Alphabet, I believe, in the afternoon. So that's going to be really, really volatile. Um, that's Wednesday, we've got more volatility. 8.30 in the morning, we got durable goods, orders, trade balance, retail inventories. Those are all really important, but honestly, they're going to move the market, um, but it's really not going to matter because at 2 p.m. on Wednesday, that's when we have the FOMC interest rate decision. And then at 2.30, Jay Powell is going to come out and do his Q&A session that he does every time with the FOMC. So it's really going to be nuts. Um, it's really crazy. Honestly, if we didn't have iTrend, Spence and I, we were just talking about it. We would be on a cruise. We would be on vacation this week because honestly, it's going to be really, really crazy. But we still got some trades uh, that we're looking at and we're going to bring to you guys here in a second. I'm just going to finish this calendar and we'll get right into it. Uh, Thursday is the GDP right at 8.30 in the morning. Um, that's interesting because it also comes right before Apple um, and Amazon. And uh, there's one other person that I'm, I'm just forgetting. One other, one other big tech name, I believe Microsoft is also on Thursday afternoon. But anyway, GDP at 8.30. We're expected 0.4%. Our previous was negative 1.6%. So if we come in less than 0.4%, but we don't go negative, I almost think that that would be a slightly bullish uh, react, that there would be a slightly bullish reaction. If we're above 0.4%, I think it would be slightly bullish um, to just neutral. Um, but if we're in the negative, we, we could see some downside, um, but again, you've got these earnings after hours that could totally just negate everything that's going to go on. So there's always an and but or a yeah but situation with this week because just the market is going to be crazy. On Friday, we've got PCE and some other news things, but at that point, everybody's going to be spent and taking vacation at the end of the week. So <laughs> low, low volume on Friday is what I'm expecting. Um, so anyway, let's get into the market here. So let's go to QQQ because NASDAQ is a little... A little too wishy-washy and i just i have a simple outlook on qqq this week especially because it, it's of all the craziness so basically um what we looked at last week is kind of is still in play 
you you could absolutely spence and i were talking about this you could absolutely have price action come all the way up to 315 during fomc depending on where we are trading at when fomc occurred excuse me absolutely see a week all the way a wick excuse me all the way up to 314 um, and you could also you could also have the potential to see a wick all the way down to 287. So we could have a really large range this week, um, given that there's so many different catalysts that are just going to literally throw the market around. There's going to be big swings. Um, one thing I do want to say is if you're a bull and you're really enjoying this rally and and um, you think that the market is turning and that we've pr adequately priced in inflation um, in the market, which I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying if you're in that bucket, even if you came down to 287 on the queues it wouldn't be that bad. Um, you'd still have higher lows here and your structure would still be slightly intact. Where it would become an issue is if after you come back down to 287, you don't go back up and regain 300 within the next week or so, because then you're looking at continued downside, right? We already hit this 305 and we actually pushed a little bit higher all the way up to this 309, 308-ish. Um, we already hit that 305 supply zone that we were talking about on Wednesday and Sunday of last week um, with you guys. So we hit that top supply zone. We didn't hit the absolute, the mother supply at 315. So we have yet to touch that. Uh, however, we did see some big sales come in as soon as we got to those highs and basically knocked out this liquidity over here at the 30860 zone. We actually closed underneath the supply zone at 304. We closed at 30, just under 302. So that was really surprising to see. So far in after hours, we're pretty, we're pretty sideways. Um, so nothing really crazy going on here, but we're pretty sideways. Um, we looked destined for a 300 break and a 296 zone um, touch here. After 296, you have to expect that we're going to bounce back up to 300 and we will play it from there. But if we reject 300 and we're starting to trend underneath it, that's not very good. That's not what you want to see. You want to be above that 300 level, uh, specifically if you are a bull. So uh, going into some trades, I really have three trades to bring you guys today. They're pretty simple and uh, Spence has a few trades as well. So let's just go right into it. AMD. They've got the chip uh, news going through this week um, on Tuesday or Wednesday. I believe it's Tuesday, um, or it might be a two-day event, but I believe I re just recall seeing Tuesday in the actual news. So with that being said, they semis have pushed up considerably into this bill. Of course, we were also rallying in the market. So some of it is because we were rallying in the market, bit, market excuse me, but there was also days where QQQ was sideways or just slightly positive. And the semis were super green and they were actually helping uh, keep the market up those days. So in my opinion, this are, they're a little bit overextended and this is more of a sell the news uh, by the rumor event or by the news or by the rumor sell the news event uh, for me personally. But regardless, even what happens, um, you have this break of 80, 87, you're coming down to this 84. Um, and I would really like to take that trade there underneath this 87 down to this 84 zone. You got a little bit of a, a take profit zone right in here at 86. So a dollar down, you definitely have some levels where you take some profits along the way. But if we decide to come back up to that 305 zone um, on Qs, you'll see AMD kind of trending towards this 89 level in which I would love to take shorts at. And I will absolutely take shorts at, at this 89 zone here. Um, maybe a little, I can see a little bit higher here at 89.80. Uh, but overall, this 89 zone as a supply zone, I am looking at to take shorts again back down to this 84 level. If we were to get really uh, bearish on the week and actually have a lot of selling pressure. I could see us kind of trending down towards this 80-ish level, this 79 zone. Uh, but we'll talk about that a different day because we're not close to that level yet. So what I'm looking at here is the 85 puts all day long. I really like these 85 puts, lots and lots of volume on Friday, lots and lots of open interest, really good, um, really good contract here. 83s also look nice if you're, those are more in your price range as well. I wouldn't really go further below the 83s at this moment yet. If you have that break 87, I guess you could go all the way down to 80, but you'd want to stay close, closer to the vest here. So there's 85s. You can even pick at the monies if you'd like 87s, 85s, 83s. I like the 85s the most personally. Um, well, as far as, let's see the next one, cat, cat, cat. Yeah, cat. Cat is the one. So cat trade very infrequently. The last trade on this that I traded I, it was a like a 420% trade and that was back in January. So here we are in July, haven't traded it since then. Um, but this setup looks very nice. So underneath, I'm really only interested in the under on this one. I'm not interested 
to short at any supplies because the supply could be up here. It's a little convoluting to me, but this under trade is very obvious to me. Underneath 176.5, you're coming back down to these lows at 172. Let's make a zone here and mark it up. This 172 to 173 zone. If it gets really bad in the market and the market is actually having a sell off, you could actually see it back into this 170 zone. I would expect it to have a hard bounce at 170 flat though. So again, underneath that 176.50, I can see it down towards that 174. I do like these 175s or the 170s. I would not go below the 170s. In fact, I would try to stay, if you could, at the 175s. And if you've never traded CAT, you need to be selling into volume, selling into volume. So that means that as the stock is, is coming towards your demand zone, do not wait for it to bounce to exit the trade. Just take the trade into the demand zone because the way that the contracts works and the spread, they're a little less liquid than most of your big tech stocks. So you have a bigger spread um, and you don't wanna get messed up and not be able to get your fills on the way out. So you wanna sell into that volume. Um, the last trade I'm gonna go over is CRM. So CRM, you guys know, we did a recap of it. We talked about it in a watch list. It was a banger trade. We traded it right here, um, or actually rather right here. Um, so I am looking to trade it again. This daily view really doesn't do any justice for you guys here, but I'm looking for, again, another simple under trade, really not too excited about any uh, shorting in supplies, unless it gets back up to this like 192 zone, 190 to 192 zone. Then I'll consider taking some, um, some shorts depending on where we are in the market. But underneath this 179.90, I do like it down towards this 176, 175 zone. And then ultimately down to this 175 to 173, 75 zone. There's a little bit of um, support in this 177. Let's get this exact level, 176.92 to 176.40. So I am expecting some support in the area. That would be your first area of take profit. Um, this is where it'd be fully out of the trade. If we are seeing some extreme selling pressure in the market, we could see ourselves back down to this 170 level. Again, very similar to CATS levels. Um, so as far as the contracts, really like these 175s. Um, if you wanted to take a bet on the entire week being bearish, just uh, with all the catalysts that are going on, you could you could take out a 170 and just take the whole week. These are actually really cheap. So I might double up and take a 170 and just run it out the whole week, sell it towards um, like Thursday morning-ish. Um, and then use the 175s as day trades, uh, as a day trade, excuse me. So 175 contracts there. And so that's what I'm looking at. CRM, CAT, and AMD this week. Spencer, what do you got for us? Let's take a look at Coke first. Earnings Tuesday morning. For me, mostly I will be staying at most of these earning plays, playing right at the day. Because like I said in the beginning, this is just too much catalyst all loaded in one week to pick a true direction. So I feel like with um, Google and Microsoft on Tuesday, you know, you have that Amazon, Apple on Thursday. That's a sandwich in itself. Put FOMC is the meat, too much to handle. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at Coke. What I'm looking for is over 61.72. I'm looking to trade that up in the 62s. And this is you got to stay close to the money as well. Heavy dividend stocks, so you'll see a lot of volume, but it definitely stays tight in the range. So I'm looking over 61.70, or I'm looking under 61.08 to place them right at the money, six to uh, 61s. Other than that, I'll stay really close because this moves to kind of like your bank stocks. So you want to stay close to that half point. Next stock I want to take a look at is Google because I'm really interested to see a little bit of distance here. Google low. You got that 102 recently. You have that split. I can see some weakness in Google. It gets under 105.45. You're looking at some, you're looking at some 104 puts. Even farther, we have a bad week. I'm looking for a break of 100. So that's something I'll really be watching, really looking at really close, see if Google can hold that. I do think Google is one of the high, highest rated tech games, in my opinion, if you, want to, if you want to compare the FANG stocks. But I still see some weakness in this name. It would have to get over 115.08 for me to possibly play some 120s. Or if I'm looking at the outside of both, I may play a 125 and then split it with a 104 put weekly and just see which one performs. It just depends where we are at the market. So. You're talking about earnings with that, right? That split there? Earnings Tuesday for Google, yep. Right. right. Split. Then we're going to be looking at Microsoft next. I think this is a weaker of the thing when you're looking at this on a short-term basis. I'm looking at Microsoft. If it gets over 262.78, but I'm really focused on this break of 258.5, the possibility to see Microsoft push all the way back down to that 252.5. It's been having a real struggle to get over that 265. So showing to be a key resistance point in the stock. 
So I'm not really interested until you get close to that. But this downside looks like it could break down 252 and a half, possibly 250. Yeah, That's this looks like a bad chart. This looks like a bad chart. Anyway, keep holding And the another thing to mention with Google and Microsoft, their earnings are after hour on Tuesday. So for me, if they are bullish in the name, I think that we'll still have an opportunity to get in to the upside just because FOMC is going to be at 2 p.m. So that's going to hold most of that upside capital. You'll still see a bounce or a pop in the stock. But I think that FOMC is going to keep a lot of those earnings mute. And then if we see good or bad, 70 point, 75 points, 100 points either way, then we'll still have opportunities to capture that top side after that meeting. So next talk I want to go over is Disney. I think Disney's a real interesting name here. Uh, I'm looking, I'm most mainly focused on Disney for this 100 break. I do like under that 102 flat to just play the 100 straight up. I think it's having a hard time getting over ultimate top would be 106 to take this stock higher. It's really having a hard time struggling. I think it's going to consolidate at that 100 level. So I'll be looking to get into some 100 puts at open, just depending on how this opens up. I am swinging some from Friday. So I'd like to see how this kind of reacts and how this bumps up going further. And then on that top side, like I said, it has to get over 106. For me, 105, 106, right in that zone. It has, it's literally rejected there several times. So until I see that, then we'll be looking towards the top side. So, and then everybody's fan favorite, we're going to go to Tesla. What a rocket. They kind of kept on and kept on going. So we did play those on 800s last week in the group. Made a significant piece of profit there. And we're also trading it towards that downside. We're looking for Tesla over this kind of high right here at 831.18. That's what I'll be looking to take it, possibly those 850 weeklies. I'm more interested in this uh, pullback that we saw late in the day, back down to that 815 area. I'm actually looking at those, playing those 800s, if we get under 806, playing it kind of close and seeing a real breakdown at that 800 level. I think now that we gain support back up here, it's going to definitely be difficult for us to break that 800. But I think this has the farthest to fall if we had a bad FOMC. We had a bad FOMC meeting. I would not be surprised. And don't put your bank on it. Tesla back to 680. Yeah, I mean, we have at bad FOMC and, and Apple. <laughs> Apple says one you bad thing. You have, you have, yeah, Google, Microsoft, Meta, Meta FOMC in the middle. And then you got Apple, Amazon. If those were red, oh. 680, I'll take one for the team. I could see it. Yeah, that's, that's but I could also see, but I could also see 900. So yeah. that's one of those you got to weigh it out, see which way it opens up, and then possibly play both sides. But me, I'm still leaning bearish. Like I said, I didn't see, I didn't see QQQ for me personally. You know, I'm looking to play that in a different way, but we'll bring that up. But yeah, Tesla either way is going to be interesting. I I'll say 680, and you can mark me down for it. Let's go to a QQQ, Zach, real quick. I wanted to build on your point. For me personally, I think we're too close to this 300 level to take a real significant stab at it in the, like, going into tomorrow. But that being said, for Monday and Tuesday, this is the main stock I'll be focusing in the morning. What I'm looking for, for a break of 300, like Zach said, I'll be looking to that 296, 297 to play a bounce back up towards that top side. It does break under that 296. That next stop for me is going to be 292 and then 281. So I'm really looking to play it that way. We come down, we break 300, bounce, and then reject again. The opposite way I'm looking at over 305, I'll be looking to it reject at 309 or possibly continue its rally up to 314. And that's something I'll be looking forward to play it either way. I won't necessarily jump in until I see direction one way or the other. So they're kind of giving you a $3 buffer going either way. Absolutely. All right, guys, with that being said, this is the recap. Uh, usually we go over a lot more, but this week is just going to be nuts. So it, it really, like, like we said in the beginning, if you're a new trader, this is not a good week to trade. If you, especially if you have nobody that's just even remotely guiding you to just, uh, uh, even if they're just saying, Hey, buy calls or Hey, buy puts today in the morning. If you don't have any type of guidance or any, any help whatsoever and you're a new trader, just, watch the market this week simulate some trades um but this is like this is really actually the lottery this week like, this it's coming really from two season traders we're just really giving you personal advice we played short weeks we played fomc weeks when i tell you the 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 amount of catas we have in this one week with everything we just listed 
it's better to take a break. Cause like we said, you want to watch the market. You want to learn how to trade options, but the biggest lesson you can learn is you don't have to trade every day. You don't. We're here to teach you guys to learn the levels and then play your levels. You don't have to take a trade to take a trade. Make sure it fits the formula. Make sure it fits your criteria and check out. We got something coming to you guys. I change checklist. Look for that a little bit in the future. And I'm going to pass it back to Zach, but patience, take your time. And if you're really confused, just simulate. Absolutely. Well said. So with that being said, definitely just be careful this week. Um, really hope you guys enjoyed this. There's definitely some good setups. Don't get us wrong. There's some good setups, but just make sure to take your profits. Don't get too greedy. We literally just released a video on 10 reasons or when it's applicable to draw back your position size. This hits like three or four of those reasons. Actually, well, it hits three. It hits three of those reasons um, this week here. That, um, so you, it's it's really really important that you be, just are careful out there. Just definitely be please be careful. Um, we you know it's it's never fun to lose money, but it's really not fun to lose money that's really difficult to make back on your account, where it makes it actually very it seem impossible for you to make back all the money to get your account to where it was. That is never good money to lose. It's okay to lose money here and there. It's okay to take small losses and learn from them, but big losses can have tremendous impacts and really set you back, especially in the trading game. That's really a career, a life advice, but in the trading game, it can really set you back really far. And those things, those are losses to avoid. So make sure you guys got your stop losses set and you're playing smart. Don't FOMO. Uh, don't be don't be dumb. Don't just put the money into the market because this is just not the week to do so. With anyway, with that being said, that's enough from us. Hopefully you guys got uh, some good trades out of this. Hopefully you guys got some good knowledge about the week. And please be careful. Again, all links are in the description if you want to come trade with us. Here are thoughts two times a week. Again, we do this live. We're about to do this live in an hour and 15 minutes where we go over more trades. We go more in depth on our analysis. Um, and it's live. You get to see our screen shares. Um, of our, of you know, our, our live screen shares, et cetera. We do that two times a week, Sunday and Wednesday. So the link is in the description for that. We've also got a bunch of other links in the description. Plus, if you aren't going to be trading this week, we've got lots of education, lots of hours of education on our YouTube chan channel. Just scroll through. We've got trade recaps. We've got options classes. We've got just regular advice videos. Um, so just please take a look. If you have, um, if you, if you are not trading this week, it's a great week to to study. And if you have the time, I definitely recommend you take advantage of it with any, anyway, with that being said, Zach and Spence, we're off. We're gone. We're about to do this in an hour and 15 minutes again. So we'll see you guys later. Hopefully you guys like have a good space, Hit the like. If you like my face even more, subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. So hit the like button. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.